The MEF in the summer of 2014 launched a very important program called UNITE, which brought their efforts together with those of other standards defining organizations, or SDOs. We've talked to several members of those different SDOs, along with a representative of the MEF, to find out why collaboration with other standards organizations is so important in the world of carrier ethernet and other related standards, such as lifecycle service orchestration. Chris, why is it important to collaborate with different organizations in order to develop next generation carrier networks? Sure, I, you know, I'll tell you the, if what you could do is actually look at what the alternative is if you, we don't collaborate between all these standards organizations. What's going to happen is every service provider is going to end up building their next generation solution in a unique way. Everyone's going to be a custom solution, so every vendor it, they're going to have to re-implement the same functionality over and over, service provider by service provider. And every vendor who builds a product is going to have to figure out how to integrate into that particular service provider's environment. And so what you're going to see is it's going to be a lot like what happens with today's operational support systems. You're, today, you've got each unique vendor building their inventory systems, their fault systems, et cetera, and they end up having to do custom integration into each of the different service provider environments. And if you ask yourself, how's that working out for you? That's what's going to happen if we aren't successful at getting the, the, uh, the, the industry collaboration to take place. Now the good news is that I feel uh, um, increasingly that the work that's happening in the, the for example, with the MEF Unite program, uh, and frankly, the interactions between all the standards bodies, it's not just by a liaisons anymore. People are meeting together, they're talking together. They are trying very, um, in a focused way, of trying to get alignment on things such as what a, a life cycle service orchestrator is and how it fits with an NFE orchestrator, et cetera. So, so um, strongly feel that this is essential to, to um, building next generation networks so that we end up in a world that's much better than today's operational support system world. Scott, what can you tell me about the future of the MEF Unite program? In the, in the MEF Unite program, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring together collaboration and coordination with other standards bodies. The, the MEF has a long history of working with carrier ethernet, but there are many different technologies now that are needed in service delivery to enable the third network. And the groups that we're working with in this are the TM Forum, we're working with the ONF from a software definition perspective, we're working with the Broadband Forum from a, a Layer 3 services uh, perspective, we're working with the IETF because they're the ones that are dealing with the actual protocols that, that get pushed down to the equipment. And the purpose of all of this is to build a group of experts so that we can avoid duplication in the different standards bodies. What do you expect to accomplish with UNITE in the next couple of years and which other standards organizations do you wish to bring into the fold? Well the most important thing about the uh, MEF UNITE program is to continue to do the collaboration with the industry and one thing that we've noticed in the MEF and across the ecosystem is the importance of the open source community in ensuring that we can test the specifications and that we're creating in the standards bodies and so for example we work with Etsy NFV which does the virtualization aspects they work with OPNFV, which is a group that takes and creates open source around the virtualization. So we, we're continuing to do this kind of work and would like to see more effort put into creating a agile life cycle around the development of standards that includes open source so that we can evaluate that the specifications that we're creating are correct and we have something that can be run in real networks. Reinhardt, the ITU recently completed an MOU with the MEF to advance carrier ethernet services. What do you think about that and what are you working on next? The uh, ITU and the MEF have had a long-standing, very fruitful and successful collaboration which dates back to uh, 2003. So you may ask, why is there a need for a new uh, MOU to be signed between uh, ITU and the MEF? So I would say there are a couple of reasons. One is the ICT industry is undergoing uh, changes at a breathtaking uh, speed. 
and uh, also you would like to uh, you know, avoid uh, the duplication of, of work. Uh, every organization, every company says, uh, you know, we have to economize our resources, human and financial. Every organization is going, because of this change, through a soul-searching exercise, uh, revisiting its uh, raison d'etre, its uh, reason for existence. And so uh, ITU and MEF have very close uh, goals that are aligned, and so it would be a good, uh, it was a good step to, uh, to revi revisit that and enforce this collaboration. I'd like to uh, pick out uh, a couple of points that are important for in this uh, MOU. Uh, one point is the technical topics that will be addressed. Uh, second topic would be the uh, standardization process, uh, the collaboration in the standards process. A third one would be uh, the impact of open source on our standardization ecosystem. And then the fourth point is collaboration on conformance and interoperability uh, test, uh, testing. So with respect to the uh, technical topics, uh, the ITU started this year uh, important work on 5G non-radio aspects and uh, on IoT, in particular Internet of Things for smart sustainable cities. And uh, in particular for 5G, uh, we'll see really a revolution and not an evolution of the network anymore. 5G will be so flexible, it will offer such a great end-to-end uh, -end, uh, flexible network uh, and this is only achievable if you have a lot of softwareization of the network. So topics like software-defined networking, um, network function virtualization, and cloud computing are essential in order to the, uh, deliver 5G together with the life cycle orchestration. So here the, the topics of uh, the MEF and the IT are, are very much aligned. Also trust is a, a key keyword in the IT. Uh, you need to be able to provision uh, a trustworthy uh, network. So that's another point where we'll uh, like to collaborate with the, uh, with the MEF. Then uh, with respect to the uh, way that we uh, want to collaborate and continue to collaborate. We, as I said, we had a very successful collaboration over the past uh, 12 years. So either <coughs> uh, the MEF could bring work into the ITU, into the uh, study groups of the ITU, which are the groups that do the technical work. On the other hand, uh, work done by the MEF could be referenced or transposed into ITU standards. Or you could even think of a third model where both groups work together have joint meetings and work uh, collaboratively, on, collaborati collaboratively on a on a standard. Uh, another point is the impact of open source on the uh, traditional standardization uh, community. I think that every standards organization, every forum is uh, currently uh, looking at that and going through a learning exercise. Uh, the ITU membership also agreed that uh, this is an important topic and uh, in January we're going to have a uh, in-depth meeting on this topic. The idea is to see how the open source community can be integrated within the uh, legal framework of the ITU. The MAF, uh, as I uh, learned, has been already very successful. Uh, you are or organizing a hackathon where you had to address these questions, so we would also be very happy to, uh, to work with you on, on this topic. And then finally, the uh, MEF has a very successful certification program. Uh, for Carrier Ethernet, the ITU also has a conformance, what we call a conformance and interoperability program uh, put into place a few years ago. So there again are, are synergies. We could uh, leverage uh, the uh, certification program that the, that, that the MEF has. Uh, we could, uh, for example, the ITU has also a conformity database. We could perhaps you know, put some of your uh, results into our, uh, our uh, conformity database. We have organized various testing events. Uh, MEF uh, has started organizing hackathons. So again, there is a uh, possibility of, uh, of very close collaboration. Ken, can you talk to me about the collaboration between the TM Forum and the MEF? Uh, TM Forum and MEF have been partnering around uh, the Catalyst program and the uh, POC con uh, concepts for about the last 18 months and been working specifically around network as a service and exploring how to do more of the zero touch 
automation of that particular uh, problem domain. It's something that has become increasingly important with the industry and it's something we see a lot of interest from our service providers and from you know, the, the industry in general. This is a problem that's going to be crossing multiple SDOs because of the, the nature of the new hybrid networks that are emerging, uh, the whole virtualization space where everything's going to be software based. We see a lot of opportunity between the two organizations to coordinate efforts around uh, the MEF LSO and the TM Forum Zoom programs. Uh, we're definitely building towards uh, future catalysts in that area around a concept that the TM Forum has called the Operations Center of the Future. And we see this being one of the key elements of that and something that we're looking forward to uh, featuring. Then the MEF and Etsy NFV are working together to advance Carrier Ethernet 2.0. What can you tell me about that, and what are your hopes for the future? From Etsy's point of view, let me start with uh, explaining to you um, how Etsy and NFV set up, very similar to your United program, and how we complement each other, and then I will follow up with the, the question that you posed to me. Um, Etsy and NFV, if you think about it, it's still a very young organization. It's only few, three, about three years plus. Um, we, we've been developing um, virtualization technologies, for um, NFV, but the bottom line is we recognize it's very important that we need to build an NFV ecosystem. And that ecosystem is not just about Etsy, it's about a lot more players, SDOs, industry players, and software developments, and also um, different communities. Now, Etsy NFV developing the concept, what we call it, um, upstream body and downstream body or the user body. So in the case of the math, the math is, is in, in the Pacific carrier ethernet use cases that apply as a user body. Now user body means that an organization take Etsy NFV as an enabler, look as an enabler to consuming Etsy NFV specification as an enabler to build based on math use cases. In the case of LSO, LSO could be looking at as a point of view as an upstream, as an organization that produce varieties of new technology for services and orchestration of the services where Etsy may collaborate and work together to build a different eco same ecosystem. Now, for Specific of the work that Etsy and FV have been collaborating and work with the math in the past nine months, we have a work item that we work together to help improve and, and document how math carry Ethernet 2, version 2, apply or utilize Etsy and FV technology or enabling concept, so virtualizations. The work right now is mainly in the math forum that developing those use cases. As soon as those use cases has established, Etsy and FV will begin to take those, looking at and apply and help apply that, and may derive new set of requirements so that we can be further enhance our ecosystem. And also, vice versa, we can also help math further advance carry Ethernet use cases to much better um, uh, solutions. So it's a both, way, both ways uh, directions for collaborations. It's still early stage, we're working together, um, and that's where we're at at this moment. James, the collaboration between the MEF and open source organizations is increasingly important to the MEF and I assume the entire carrier industry. What can you tell me about that? So there's a lot of great work happening right now between MEF and uh, various uh, open source community right now. Uh, that will benefit ultimately the service providers and also the technology vendors who will build to it. Uh, for example, you have projects like uh, MEF and the Addis OBF, which is uh, standardizing the uh, Ethernet um, buy and sell. Um, from my previous role as, as a service provider, when we bought Ethernet from different providers, everybody had their own way of doing it. We had to, you know, when we would work with you know, three providers, we all had to fill out different forms. So from an operational perspective, I see great value in that. Um, the other work happening between MEF and um, the Ethernet Interconnect Project, which is uh, 
working closely with University of New Hampshire to, uh, you know, how do you interconnect different operators? So from an operational perspective, those are great values and important. Uh, recently, MEF is working closely with TN Forum on some of the information model and some of the um, uh, standards such as the Ethernet product catalog, so there's great value in that. Um, there's also great value, uh, MEF is working with uh, ONF in the common information model, the data modeling part, part of it. Uh, great value in that too. Um, and even Cable Labs, we have two uh, open source projects, one with OPNFE and one with Open Daylight that is uh, providing great value to, um, the, um, to, the, to the service provider and also technology vendor. But perhaps the most important thing is really creating a open uh, platform that the uh, uh, technology vendors could build to and also the server, ser uh, service providers could use to offer business uh, services to the end customer. Uh, that might be of great importance.